this um, surgery and the care that he needs. But at the end of the day, Lord, you are our healer. You are the one who sustains us. Us and we just want to pray right now that this healing process in Lucas's knee and any other parts of his body needed, that you would facilitate that and that you would uh, just cause your healing virtues to course about throughout his entire body and just raise him up. Lord, we just pray this infection will be um, brought completely under control and made null and void here at the right time. Uh, just give him your grace and Cherie as well as she cares for him. And just, um, Lord, please let your healing uh, restorative touch be upon him as well in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so first of all, thank you guys for praying for my brother, Joel. Um, so Joel, for those of you who don't know this, Joel is um, 32 years old. He's profoundly aut autistic, so it's hard to, for him to explain what how he feels. Um, my mom and dad um, just have to go on context clues more than anything else. Um, but Joel hasn't been himself for about a month at this point. Um, Right now, what's happening, he is at AMC. Um, he's been there for, I guess, three days at this at this point. Um, they're very tired. Um, they were worried that there was um, a blockage, like a gallstone blockage in a bile duct. They've ruled that out at this point, which we're thankful for because it means one less surgery for him. They are going to remove the gallbladder tomorrow. Um, and then there could possibly be a kidney stone surgery at a later point. We're not sure about that. Um, and um, but please, please do com continue to pray. Joel is real. He's real tricky. His medicines are just so. He's kind of like a fine-tuned clock. My mom always says everything needs to be in a certain way. Again, especially his medicines, and they have made some medicine errors. Um, he has epilepsy and is on big doses of anti-seizure meds, and uh, they weren't giving him any for a couple of days anyway. So if you could just pray. Um, he's not himself right now, which is really stressful for my mother, especially because when he's not himself, he's angry, and um, which means he'll yell or hit. And... And it worries my mom that they would put him in what may be like in a different ward um, than just anyway. So um, it just it's hard. And please pray for healing and wisdom and and peace and calmness for Joel. Like I can't stress like how important that is for my family. So uh, this this is an example of what Mary Ellen was talking about um, in a little bit more corporate way. But um, so I think all of this is timely, especially after what she shared. Uh, we're going to stand uh, for prayer for Joel and for Jill and Patty Schauber. David, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you to lead us. You've got that nice, booming voice. And, uh, yeah. and then we're going to worship the Lord. And then at a certain point, we're going to have prayer groups around the room. If you have a specific need, uh, that would be a great time to come and receive prayer. So let's stand and pray for Joel, and then we'll enter into worship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for Joel. Jehovah is God. Father, what you're doing in this young man's life, we just pray that you would complete the work you're doing to bring glory to your name. 
Father, we pray that you would give wisdom to uh, Patty and Jeff through this process, that they may have that sensitivity to your spirit as this is right, this is not, and that they would just understand uh, what needs to be going on at this time and do what a parent should do. Father, we pray for uh, just your protection over him. We thank you for uh, his life, Joel's life. And Lord, we pray that you would just calm his spirit, that you would just speak to his uh, inner being, Lord, whom you have created, and just bring a tranquility and a peace that, Lord, he's not known before. But, Lord, that he will have that assurance in his heart of your love and your watch care over him. Lord, that uh, it would amaze the doctors, it would amaze the nurses for what you are doing in this young man's life. Father, we thank you for the way you created him. Lord, you have used him to draw many of us closer to you. Lord, I pray that you will just uphold uh, Kristen and uh, the rest of the family, Lord, and as well as Jeff and Patty, that they would experience your peace too, your presence in a powerful way. Just move in Jesus' name. Amen.
Lord, then the things of this world will go strangely dim. Lord, in the light of your glory and grace. Father, we just cast our cares upon you, our concerns, Lord. Thank you that we have a great God that we can go to. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Thank you, Lord God. You are the object of our worship, Lord. Thank you.
Thank you, Father. At this time, we're going to have uh, prayer teams uh, stationed around for you to go and receive continued prayer. Trusting the Lord to meet you as you step out in faith and come to Him.
have something to say to us. Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have also obtained access by faith into his grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, how much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life? More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Amen. Amen. Amen.
salvation belongs to our God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are worthy. You may be seated. Good morning. <laughs> I like mornings like this. It's just we're, we're just a big family, you know, praying together and loving on each other. And uh, it's kind of like a big living room here. Uh, I do like that. <clears throat> I was doing some reading. Uh, I was doing some reading this week in Proverbs 10. Oh, good call. Thank you. Let's dismiss the children. <laughs> Man, you'd think, you'd think I'd kind of have that figured out by now. <laughs> Somebody already has to tell me every time. Well, uh, I was really, I'm so excited to tell you this. I'm reading in Proverbs 10. Um, you know, words truly do have power. Um, the writer continually contrasts the mouth of a fool, the mouth of the righteous, uh, words of hatred, words of love. Uh, our words have significant power over over others and 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 over ourselves as well what we tell ourselves and what others tell us um, and I was thinking a lot about that I had heard it said one time before um, when we're offended it's easy to harbor that and it's been said holding a grudge is letting is like letting someone live rent free in your head and uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. You know, you kind of your mind just continues to spool back to it. You know, it, it's something where you've been hurt. Um, you know, when you continually re just think through that. There's an important question. Um, for uh, hey Brian, <laughs> when uh, when when something keeps rolling through your head and it's it's kind of living rent free and it just keeps consuming your thoughts, consuming your time, and it and it truly steals your joy. Um, so what, what, what do we do about that? And I think we go back to the word and we, we fill ourselves with what God says. And sometimes, you know, I find myself not really liking myself a lot, but that's, that's the broken me. And who I am is, is made in God's image. And being made in God's image, he has instilled value in me. So I am intrinsically valuable. And I think we need to, to recognize that, that you are valuable. Whatever you might tell yourself, you are valuable. Whatever somebody else might say, you are valuable. So, so I encourage you in that. Words have power. Um, encourage each other. Sometimes you might need to say something kind of tough to me, and that's okay. But the, the words you say, um, the way you love, just it's encouragement. Um, I wanted to make an announcement about our June 5th, uh, uh, what do you call it, thing? I don't know. With uh, Brad Huddleston, thing is always, thing is always a great descriptive word. What's that? It covers a lot. It's kind of the thing. Okay, let's see here. Oh, here we go. All right, so we are having our fellowship lunch. That's what we're going for. And Brad Huddleston will be here to talk with us. And um, let's see, uh, sign up in the foyer, or you can respond online to the invitation that will be sent out. Uh, child care is available for children under the age of 10. And for this meal, the church will provide the main dish, uh, drinks, and dessert. Everyone is asked to bring a side dish to share. So bring your favorite side dish. Yeah. You know, like the green beans with the crunchy onions on top. Yeah. You, know, it's, you know what I'm talking about. So just a suggestion. <laughs> 
the meal. Oh, it's it's ham. It's probably ham. So I didn't tell you that because right now the probably descriptive word in front of it. So we're not 100. percent Somebody shaking their head. Is it ham? Still probably ham. We're gonna stick with that. See, we're all family here. This is great. Um, so there you go. So with that said, uh, are there any first-time visitors we have today? Huh? Huh? All right. Wonderful. Well, without further ado. Uh oh. Yeah. It is wonderful. Yeah. Um, without further ado, Brian, do you want to share your your last uh, message in Galatians with us? 